Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a video all about my bullet journal and just kind of how I use it and what I use it for and just showing you guys some of my favorite layouts to use. I just started bullet journaling probably a couple months ago, so this is definitely a very like simple beginner's type of bullet journal, but it works for me and I've gotten a couple comments and messages asking for this, so I thought that I would show you guys. So before I jump in to the actual pages, I wanted to go over like what I use and how I use it. So this is the journal that I use. I'm going to go ahead and link it down below. I'm not sure if the actual brand, it was one of the first ones when I searched on Amazon and it had good reviews, so I went ahead and got this one. It was about $17, I want to say, which seems pretty average for bullet journals. I do really like it. I wish that the pages were a little bit thicker, but it's overall, I think, like a very good first bullet journal. So it's just like a black faux leather cover, and it has this little strap, and then when you open it up, it has a pretty basic like table of contents, and then obviously the pages are dotted. That's probably not going to show up on camera, but they are, and then in the back, I really like this one because it has a little pocket, um, so that's really great for just storing extra things for important files, papers, whatever I need for that like current moment in time, if that makes sense. Um, and I just really like how small it is. And this one has worked really well for me. So again, I will link this one down below. So as far as tools and like pens and stuff like that, I keep it pretty simple because like I said, I like it very clean and minimalistic. So for pens, I really like the Pilot G2s. I have a 0.38 millimeter and a 0.7 just so that like if I want thinner text or thicker text, I have a little bit of variety and this has worked really well for me. It's pretty much all I need. And then I also just have a pencil in my little kit just because like if I want to trace something out or test a layout, something like that, it's just good to have a pencil and an eraser. And then for markers, I really like the Zebra Midliners. I found these on Amazon. I mainly use this gray one, but I do sometimes use the blue. I have a couple other of these as well, but honestly, these are the only two that I really use um, just out of the color packs. So going into how I use my bullet journal, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys like four pages or so today that I kind of pre-did as like a layout to show you guys because I typically use my journal just for to-do lists, monthly goals, affirmations, and logging my finances. So obviously some of those are a little bit more personal than others and I'm not going to show you guys like my finances log just because like that's a pretty obvious thing not to show. Um, but I will show you a couple pages. So this first page I just make on the beginning of every month. It just says August 2017. It's pretty basic, like I said, but I just like having something that signifies like a new month, a new chapter in my journal. And if I'm really feeling it, there's a little number in the corner and I'll go ahead and log that on the table of contents. But honestly, I don't really keep up with that because I have the little string that I can use to mark where I am. So that works for me, but there is that option if you want it. Then after that, I like to have a page with just like some quote or mantra for the month. So this month I did make things happen and it's got a couple little paper airplanes. Again, I'm not super artistic with this, but this is just what works for me and I like it. I think it's like a good month mantra to have. Um, as you guys know, I'm studying abroad at the end of the month. So I think it's just like a good thing to have, a good reminder. And I like having something kind of visually pleasing to like start off the new month. So then the next two pages are where it gets a little bit more detailed. I have my affirmations for the month on the left and my goals slash monthly to-do list on the right. I've kind of recently gotten into affirmations and kind of gratitude and it's still kind of new to me and I'm not 100% like in love with it, but I definitely think that it works and it works well for me. And again, I know it can be kind of weird to like get into and like say things that are just like kind of out of your typical vocabulary. Um, like saying that you're aligned with certain energies like it just sounds weird at first but it's really worked for me and I think just having those like positive reoccurring thoughts um, kind of law of attraction style works really well for me so as you can see I just have a list of six affirmations um, these are ones that I made for this video and kind of general ones that I like to use more often than not I'll put like specific goals like I want like I'm going to make this amount of money this month or I want to reach this amount of subscribers by this amount of day something kind of like that that's not necessarily an affirmation but I'm kind of grouping like affirmations and manifestations together if that makes sense so just as some examples ones that I like to use is my business gets stronger and grows every day I am aligned with the energy of comfort and abundance 
and something wonderful is about to happen to me. So I have a couple others here as you can see, but these are just ones that I like to try to get in the habit of reading every morning or every night. Again, I know it's not for everyone, but I personally really like it. So then coming over here to the page on the right, I just have my monthly goals and I kind of break these up. It's kind of goals kind of to-do list. Like I wouldn't say like a dentist appointment is a goal for the month. It's more of like a to-do list. Um, but I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I kind of have them broken up into little sections. So this top section is like YouTube stuff. This is like Instagram kind of YouTube stuff. And then this is like school miscellaneous. And then this bottom one is another job that I have that I'm kind of wrapping up. Um, so just for like my YouTube stuff, I have like upload nine videos, assign a contract, call one of my managers, um, plan some videos, edits um, to like my channel banners, get those finalized, make some business cards. So those are just some things that I want to get done during the month. I also have some other things like making a budget for when I go abroad. Um, there's an email I need to hear back from somebody. Still got that dentist appointment. Um, and I want to back up like my photos and everything before I go abroad, obviously, because you never know what's going to happen. Um, so I do have a little bit of room here at the bottom. So if I think of more goals, obviously things kind of come up throughout the month. I normally write pay bill on here just for the month because obviously you have to do that or your credit card gets shut off. Um, but I guess I just forgot to write that. And as I complete them, I will fill in the little box next to it with a black mark. And if I can't get that done in the month, I put a slash through it, which to me signifies that it's like moved to another month or there's a reason it's being like held off. For example, like I was going to do business cards this past month, but then I switched management, so my email address is gonna change. So it wouldn't make sense to order new business cards if I know that contact information is gonna change. I feel like I'm kind of over explaining, but that's kind of how I do my goals to-do list. It's just good for me to have something to kind of refer to throughout the month to make sure that I'm staying productive and getting what I want to get done, done. And then the last little layout I'm gonna show you guys is how I log my finances. And this is definitely something that would either work really well for people or not work for you. For me, this obviously works, but I understand why people would want something more like organized. So I just write credit at the top and I don't do this by month because of the way my credit card statement is. It ends on like the 15th or 16th of each month. So I just like mentally know where the cutoff is. Um, so on this side, I have all the money that I spend and obviously this is blank because I just don't feel comfortable showing my expenses So what I'll go ahead and do is there's like a little dash and so that's any money that I spend So if I spend two dollars at Dunkin, I'll write down like two dollars and then a couple of spaces over write Dunkin And then like keep making that list throughout the month or the transaction period And then when it gets to the end, I will total it up and highlight the final amount that I spent and then same for money um, made down here. The section's obviously a little bit smaller because you buy more than you make like in terms of transactions. So I'll write down all of the things. So if I get paid for like YouTube, I'll write like the amount of money and then go over a couple spaces and write like YouTube June or whatever that like cost is. And then at the end of the pay period month, however you want to organize it, I'll add that up as well and highlight it. And then in this little corner here, I'll write the amount of like profit that I made. So obviously it's not 100% like foolproof here, but it works really well for me and just having to tangibly write the expense down makes me like kind of think through if I want to purchase something um, because I know I'll have to write it down and it helps me just like see how much I'm spending. If you wanted to take this a step further, you could highlight different transactions like food in one color, clothing in another color, entertainment in another color, stuff like that. Um, but for me, I feel like I don't spend enough money to the point where I need to do that. Like I'm pretty aware of how much I'm spending and where I need to be like at by a certain time of the month. That's kind of the beauty of bullet journals is that you can kind of customize them and find what works for you. So those are all of the pages that I'm going to be showing you in my bullet journal for this video. If you want to see more, give this a thumbs up so that I know I'd be happy to show you some of my other pages. I forgot to mention this in the beginning of the video as well, but I'm going to go ahead and leave some Instagrams down below of people who kind of post pictures of their layouts that have inspired me and stuff like that, because obviously I didn't fully think of all of this by myself. 
Um, and that's a really great place to find inspiration if you're stuck or you don't know where to begin. Pinterest is another one. Just search like bullet journal finances or bullet journal health and there'll be a ton of different layouts. It's super fun and easy. And I really encourage everyone who's like kind of been wanting to get into it to start. I will have my social media linked down below. Per usual, I've been posting a ton on Instagram and Twitter lately and I would love for you to go check it out. And I think that that's all. So I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.